As a WPF developer, dependency injection is critical to having applications that are easy to maintain, easy to extend, and easy to test. And in WPF, we have a number of dependency injection containers to choose from. Unity, Dry IOC, Ninject, Structure Map, AutoFact, the list goes on. But what about Angular? Can we do dependency injection in Angular? Heck yeah, we can. And you know what? It's built right into the framework. So let's go ahead and see what it takes to use it. Roll the intro. Using dependency injection in Angular is as easy as one, two, three. One, we need a service to inject. Two, we need to decorate that service to make it available to be injected. And three, we need to actually inject the service and use it in our components. So let's go ahead and see what it takes to actually implement all three of these steps. The first step to using dependency injection in Angular is to have something to inject. In this case, we're going to inject a service and the service is going to set the title of our component. Now we can create the service in a number of ways. One way would be to open up our file explorer right click in our application and add the file manually. But I'm a lazy developer and I'd rather do it an easier way. I'm gonna rely on the Angular CLI to create the service for me. To do this, I'm going to show the terminal by pressing control back tick. And when the terminal appears, I'm gonna type ng, g for generate, s for service, and then I'm going to provide the service a name. In this case, title. This will be a title service. Notice, I did not append the name service at the end of this name. And you'll see why in a moment. I'm going to hit enter and let the CLI do its thing. Now let's open up our file explorer and we'll see that the Angular CLI produced two files. One being a spec file and the other being the service file. Let's open up the title.service.ts file. The first thing I want you to notice is the name of the class. Notice that it's title service. Even though we provided just the name title in the CLI, the Angular CLI appended the service name to our title. Next, we need to provide some functionality for the service to perform. In this case, we're gonna add a function called getTitle that returns a title. In this case, it's gonna say title from service. The second step to using dependency injection in Angular is to decorate your service class with the injectable decorator. Now, because we use the Angular CLI to generate the service for us, the injectable decorator was added for us automatically. However, if you were writing this by hand, you would have to manually add this to your class. I want to point out this provided in property. See the value is set to root. When using dependency injection in Angular, you can specify the scope in which a service can be injected. It can be injected globally throughout your application, or you can scope it to where it can only be injected in a particular component and its children. In this case, provided in root tells Angular that we're going to make this service globally accessible to any component in our entire Angular application. The third step to using dependency injection in Angular is to actually inject the service you've just created. So let's go back to our sample component.ts file. In the constructor, we're going to request that title service. So let's say private, title service of type title service. This is all we have to do. Now we can use the service within the component itself. I can set this.title equal to this.titleService.getTitle. We're gonna save the application. And now we see that we are actually getting the title from the service in which we just injected and displaying that in our component. Now let's go back to our, our title service. And remember, I mentioned the provided in root tells Angular that we want the entire application to have access to the service. What if we didn't want that behavior? Let's remove this. We'll save the service. And what we're going to notice is in the browser, we're going to get nothing. It didn't work. We were not able to inject the service so the component failed to load. In this case, if we want to scope the service to the sample component specifically, we can simply enter the component decorator, add the provider's property, and set it to the title service. This tells the component that we're going to make the title service available to this component and any nested children. So once we make that change, save the class, 
you can see that our browser has been reflected that it properly works and we are getting the title from the service once again. However, if I were to try to use the title service anywhere else in the application, it would fail because we no longer marked this title service as injectable from the root application. And that's it. That's all there is to it. In three easy steps, you could be using dependency injection in your Angular applications like a champ. Well, now it's time. It's time to announce the winner from the last video for the one year subscription to Infragistics Ultimate worth nearly $2,000. Are you ready for this? Here we go. The winner is John Olowell. Congratulations, you are the winner. I will be contacting you very shortly on how to claim your license. If you'd like a chance to win a one year subscription to Infragistics Ultimate worth nearly $2,000, while at the same time learning to take your current WPF skills to the web with Angular, then subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and you'll be entered into the next video's drawing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.